Did you know? Revolutionary girl Utena almost came to English speakers under a very different name. In the late 1990s, Inoki Films USA licensed Utena with the intent of calling it Ursula's Kiss. Like many anime adaptations from the 90s, characters received name changes to help familiarize them to English speakers. Utena obviously became Ursula, and Anthe became Angie. The student council, Toga, Miki, Sionji, and Juri became Tommy, Mickey, Kevin, and Julie, respectively. Despite all the name changes, Dios and Choo Choo kept their names. Among the name changes, Inoki also included characters that had no clear counterpart from the original show. Silver Mask, Pasolini, and Lady June were all supposedly part of the Seekers of Armageddon, which is also a group that did not exist. Though Ursula's kiss never fully materialized, it was advertised to run in Australia before it was scrapped by Central Park Media for a more faithful English adaptation. These changes did, however, show up in the Latin American adaptation as Ursula's Magic Ring. The concepts of Utena changed many times during the early development. Much like one of Sailor Moon's early concepts, Utena originally had many scenes including guns. In the episode 38 commentary for Central Park Media's release, director Kunihiko Ikuhara and manga creator Chiho Saito expounded on this early idea. Ikuhara said, There was an idea to use guns in the beginning. There were talks about using guns in the duels. We decided not to. We were saying that would be bad. The reason why we said it'd be bad is because at the time, American gun incidents were frequently being reported on the Japanese news. That's why we decided not to go with the gun. Mr. Enokido in the beginning was adamant about using guns. Ikuhara continued, In the beginning, he kept saying, Guns! And I kept saying, No guns! But in the end, we went with swords. Actually, I think it would have been easier if we used guns. We might have been able to come up with more visual variations if we used a gun. It was such a pain to come up with variations with swords. If I had to do it again, I'd go with guns. On the subject of Sailor Moon, Director Ikuhara was also one of the more prevalent directors for the franchise. An unused plot of Ikuhara's for the Sailor Moon Supers movie became one of the core concepts for Revolutionary Girl Utena. The unused concept of the Sailor Moon Supers movie would have been the first appearance of both Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune, and independent from the television anime series. It involved Sailor Neptune in a, quote, thousand year sleep at a place called the end of the world, and Sailor Uranus having to steal a talisman from the Sailor Senshi to wake her up. The apex of the movie would have involved a rodeo scene with Sailor Uranus on a black pegasus and Sailor Moon on a white pegasus. In the opening for Revolutionary Girl Utena, we see Utena on a white horse and Anthe on a black horse, both in armor, heading towards the castle. Ultimately, Ikuhara had to abandon the idea. Before production began, the producer walked off of Sailor Moon. It would have been possible for me to make the story still, but since I came up with the story with the producer, I also walked off. So, the same thing in Utena comes from the Sailor Moon plot. Back on the subject of concepts, Utena herself radically changed throughout production while the show was still in development. Being called Revolutionary Girl Utena Kiss, Utena was much more masculine in appearance. One of the conceptual drawings drawn by Chiho Saito shows a number of characters. Among them is Utena Haruka in the center and a character named Ran on the bottom. The design for Ran would eventually be given to Utena herself. As they settled on Utena's final design, her hair color was originally set to be blonde. This design choice, along with the use of roses, and the overall premise of the series, had many pointing back to a perceived inspiration to Ryoko Ikeda's The Rose of Versailles. Ikuhara initially, however, vehemently denied the series as an inspiration. In the aforementioned episode commentary, Ikuhara said, I wanted to define the meaning of shoujo manga. I wanted to round up all the animated stories made with girls as the main characters up till then into one story. 
Up until that point, I had a huge adverse reaction towards Rose of Versailles. I was absolutely against that idea. The reason why is because at the time, I was thinking of doing a story that was more sci-fi or fantasy, but that didn't sit with me too well. But I got a lot of requests from people around me. Why don't you make it more like Rose of Versailles? Or why don't you make it more like Princess Knight? I was told that numerous times. I had to keep telling them, no, I don't want to do that. To which Chiho Saito chimed in. So, on the surface, it's supposed to look like a parody. The visuals may remind you of something like Rose of Versailles, but what you actually intended was that if you paid attention, you'd realize it's nothing like it, right? Weird, did you know anime? The Anime Trivia Resource. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and share this video with all the other old school anime fans out there. I'm Dawn, aka Usamimi, the host of the Anime Nostalgia Podcast. You can listen to my podcast about older anime, manga, and what it was like to be an anime fan before the internet at animenostalgia.blogspot.com and you can find me on Tumblr at animenostalgia.tumblr.com Thanks again and we'll see you next time!